another interview, another bomb. I was just with one of the, the, the leaders and I think opinion leaders in the Republican Party. Liz Cheney. I'm landing with voters. Because oh, in the numbers, it it's the opposite. Former President Trump leads you on this issue. Well, when I'm out, this is why I'm going out to Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and and um, and, and Michigan. And Michigan yeah. Excuse me. Just got in late this morning, actually. Um, but going to three states yesterday, and I'm going to continue being on the road. I have to earn the, the vote. That right there was just two small bits of this interview. They had people scratching their head like, why in the world would you mention Liz Cheney, especially while you're trying to get additional leftist votes? And of course, I mean, yeah, another bomb by Kamala Harris. It makes people wonder why in the world she's even doing these interviews, especially given the fact that Barack Obama, from what we are gathering right now, has fully assumed control uh, of her campaign fully, and I mean fully assumed, because obviously, if you guys did not see the two o'clock video, and of course, there's something I'm trying for the algorithm, I've got a video coming out at 11, which I'll link in the description box, and of course, a video that came out at two o'clock, which will also be linked in the description box for you guys. Yeah, this campaign is not doing too well, and of course, the panic is beginning to set in. Let me just go ahead and kind of run this montage from MSDNC talking to black voters to our friend James Carville. Just wonder for anybody who heard that, like what they thought of that. I was deeply offended. I was deeply offended. And it felt like a moment where it's like you N words better get in line and do what we say. And it felt like the Demo hit him as the czar of the Democratic Party coming down to say, go get these N words in line. And the general tone of it was disgusting. It was abhorrent. I don't respect it. I didn't like nothing about it. And Kamala, two days after that, is like, we love our, we love our black men. We, we have programs and things that we're rolling out for them. And she rolled out policy. Good cop, bad cop. You know, because well, I'm tired of the good cop, bad cop. <laughs> and I, let me start with the women here about Kamala Harris. She's a woman of color. I'm not putting her down because of that. And I'm not putting her down because she's a woman. I'm not a feminist, so I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I don't think that she has the personality. I don't think that she has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. I don't want to be scared because my president is scared. I want my president to feel secure and manly and about it. We brought up gender, right? Like, do you think yeah. it matters? that she's a woman and people aren't comfortable having a woman in a top leadership role. The thing no. that is, Trump talks about this a lot. He says, you know, Kamala Harris became black right. when it was mm -hmm. convenient. Right. Yeah. Can you, can you talk to me about, do you feel, do you agree with him on that? Do you feel oh, like she's wearing Definitely. her blackness? Absolutely. She's sworn into the, when she sworn to the Senate, it was as the first Indian American. Thank you. Which is, it's fine. We don't care. Yeah. We all know she's not black. Let's understand that. We we are all clear of that. But well, my point of view, well, like I told I, you earlier, she's already been there. She's right. in office right now. You know, the other question is, were you better off four years ago? Are you going to be better off in a penitentiary four years from now? Or still having the right of free speech and the right of political dissent? Because that's literally what's, what's on the ballot. And I suspect in 1941... I don't know if people thought they were better off than they were four years ago or in 1861, what people thought. But I know this, when the republic was threatened, people picked up arms and answered the call. Well, or, or, you know, in 1965, in the middle of the civil rights movement, I think people decided they want to take matters in their own hands and create a better country. And that's what I hope we do here in the next few weeks. There's also Biden, for some odd reason, now coming out saying that Trump needs to be locked up. This is a guy who also wants to replace every civil servant, every single one. He thinks he has a right under the Supreme Court ruling on immunity to be able, if need be, if, he, if it was the case, to actually eliminate, physically eliminate, shoot, kill someone who is a, he believes to be a threat to him. I mean, so I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We gotta lock him up. Politically lock him up. Yes, I know that Joe Biden said locked up politically, but of course it always leaves room for sound bites. I know exactly what exactly is going to happen here. Trump's going to run with this, and of course it's going to come off a certain way. And of course, to go on top of this, the Obamas are going to probably muzzle Biden, who for the most part has been muzzled. If you guys remember the 2012 presidential campaign, you'll remember all the gaffes. I don't think I need to go through every single one, but there were a lot of classic zingers. So 
What is happening here? So with Mark Halperin, famed pollster, who's actually a Democrat, basically saying that the election will be called on election night, he believes for Trump, uh, it leaves a lot to uh, be desired for this campaign that Kamala Harris is running. And of course, she also had to, uh, let's just say, answer that question of what will you do? Will you concede if you lose? Pay attention to this answer. Two weeks to go. And I'm very much grounded in the present in terms of the task at hand and we will deal with election night and the days after as they come and we have the resources and the expertise and the, and and the focus on that as well so you my have team is ready to go is that what you're saying are you thinking about that as a possibility of course it looks like we're going to get through the same type of crap again however i do believe it will be different because if you look at the early voting numbers which of course will be linked in the description box via this video here from Greg Foreman. And of course, also Real American Politics has done several videos on this. And of course, you can follow various Twitter accounts, election Twitter accounts that cover this. Things are not looking too good. So you got to ask yourself a question. Why in the world did Kamala Harris do this interview? And of course, it being NBC, you would figure, okay, great. It would be a softball interview. However, this softball interview probably did more to hurt her than it did to help her. For example, the Democratic Party is a little bit confused about what base of support that they're aiming for. I talked about the Democrats aiming for the neoconservative base that's jilted with the current Republican Party in the first video of the day when I talked about Jink Younger failing on the topic of political strategy. And I also explained that there were actually a lot more of those out there that were in battleground states versus leftists out there in blue states, which, of course, those blue states were going to vote blue no matter who. Regardless, it's just the cherry on top, whatever's left on top of the normal Democrat Party votes and why it is that he failed on that. But I also talked about in the previous video why it was that she was continuing to lose, continuing to believe minority voters. All Harris's entire base of support is nothing but college-educated white women. And there are a lot of those. But also to go on top of that, you have to have some working-class white women. You have to have uh, working-class and college-educated black women to go along with that. And you have to be able to peel from the normal Democratic Party side, which you can't get. And you have to be able to peel from the evangelical base, which, of course, she's pissed off. And, of course, she's losing Catholics. You have to peel that off to get the type of victory that these people are looking for. And like I said before, it's starting to reflect now in the polls. And it's also beginning to reflect in the early vote. The Democratic Party at this moment in time is absolutely 100% desperate. So, of course, they're going to send Barack Obama out there. But as I explained in the 2 o'clock video, he's already said some things that, quite frankly, have already backfired. I mean, like I said, the videos will be in the description box for a reason. But why is she doing this? Well, obviously, she's trying to pivot back towards the center and the Democratic Party's number one issue that they're running on is, in fact, abortion. And, of course, the thing about abortion is that it's actually the fourth thing down from the top of the list. But the Democrats would have you believe it's the number one thing. I've said this around on several occasions. Working class women, middle class women are also thinking about their paycheck, too. And nobody is a harsher critic of women than women. Anytime a woman gets an abortion inside the friend group, there's always going to be one to two friends who are going to look down upon that and say this girl needs to keep her legs closed. That is the truth about women when they have conversations with one another about these same topics. Of course, everybody on the surface is okay, and therefore her uh, being able to choose. But the minute the conversation is over with, people are going to be telling their soulmates, their uh, significant others, and of course, other girlfriends who will keep their mouths closed because women are, in fact, better at keeping their mouths closed than men that, uh, yeah, this girl is a hug. Why is she suddenly trying to moderate on it? Well, let's look at this clip. So is a question of pragmatism then, what concessions would be on the table? Religious exemptions, for example, is that something that you would consider? I don't Republican think we should be terms? making concessions when we're talking about a fundamental freedom to make decisions about your own body. To Republicans like, for example, uh, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, who would back something like this on a Democratic agenda if, in fact, Republicans control Congress, would you offer them an olive branch? Or is that off the table? Is that not an option for you? I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals because we can go on with a variety of scenarios. Let's just start with a fundamental fact. A basic freedom has been taken from the women of America. The freedom to make decisions about their own body. And that cannot be negotiable. Did you ever think that maybe the biggest problem in America right now is people getting an abortion for the sole purpose of birth control? I, I, I think if you actually created a law that said that... Uh, 
you can't use the R word as an excuse because in order for you to be able to get an abortion due to the R word, you have to have a police report actually proving that you were. I think that's one way we could cut things down. That would actually be a much, much more moderate position, not an ultra conservative position. Also something else too, in the case of incest, I think that would ultimately be a family decision, but ultimately the girl would obviously get sway in that. And of course, in the life of the mother, I've always said that I've been understandable about that one. However, it has to be an actual literal medical procedure as if to say, a doctor has to literally, uh, how do I say, has to actually sign off on it and say there was no other way. That's the biggest problem that we have with abortion is that they're using these main three as an excuse, when in reality, a lot of women are using it as good old-fashioned birth control. By the way, to all the liberals out there who think that conservatives are against birth control, I want you to know right now, if you ask a conservative how they feel about the pill or the shot, more times than not, they're going to tell you that they really and truly don't care. They understand why a woman, especially one that's married, might want to wait to start a family because maybe the time may be a little bit different. But the problem with these ladies is they don't want to start a family until they get to like their 30s and they find out that their eggs are diminishing. And of course, in some cases, some men just won't have them because they may have already hit the proverbial wall. I'm not making this video to insult women. I'm just telling you like it is. I understand that some women are probably going to be pissed off. But then again, though, my audience at this moment in time is currently 95% male. So I'm pretty sure the guys will back me up on this. But then the topic changes. The topic does, in fact, change. It changes to when did you know? When did you know that Joe Biden was mocked up? Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But the reason that you are at the top of the ticket is because he dropped out of this race. And so I want to ask you, um, and, and it was largely because of that debate performance back in June. You defended him in the days before and in the days after as you were campaigning for another four years for President Biden. Can you say that you were honest with the American people about what you saw in those moments with President Biden as you were with him again and again repeatedly in that time? Guys. I'm replaying the clips in the B-roll footage so that way you guys can see. What I want you guys to pay attention to is the woman's body language. First and foremost, everybody already knows that she was in on it. Everybody already knows that she was in on getting Biden knocked out of the race. Everybody knows this. And this woman's body language is just making it 10 times worse. And you'll see this over the course of the interview. I don't think I need to hash all the details behind it and what did in fact happen or what did not happen or what the media is refusing to report. I don't think I need to do that because everybody for the most part pretty much already knows. This opportunistic witch stepped in, wanted the nomination, so she assisted in getting Joe out of the race with the Obamas. However, the Obamas did not anticipate how bad she would be and of course they wanted an open convention, open primary, or at least like, open convention, yeah. They wanted that because they knew how horrible she was. But, of course, she jumped on top of that, something that she, quite frankly, did a lot when she was, you know. Mm. But still, the point is this right here. She jumped on it, and she started wheeling and dealing. Maybe that sounds like there's a lot of sexual connotations with this woman here, too. Either way, I don't really actually care. But let's watch the rest of it, and let's pay attention to this woman's body language. Of course. Joe Biden is a, an extremely accomplished, um, experienced and um, and and capable in every way that anyone would want if they're president. And you never Absolutely. saw anything like what happened at the debate night behind closed doors with him. It was a bad debate. People have bad debates. Should he? That, it, he is absolutely. But that's the reason why you're here, and he's not running for the top of the ticket. Well, you'd have to ask him if that's the only reason why. What do you think? Who are at home is looking at this and they're seeing how it is that she just keeps on nodding off. She's looking up in the air. They're looking at her body language and they know that she's clearly lying. So obviously the trust factor is a very, very big thing here. People just don't trust her. They also don't like her either. But then again, at the same time, they don't like Donald Trump, but at least they trust him. Trust is a very, very important thing uh, for the American people. They have to have some form of trust in you before they decide to actually vote for you. However, on the topic of trust, there was another segment there in that two minutes that I pulled from X, or two minutes and 20 seconds to be exact. And of course, it was on the topic of NATO and on the topic of what's going on overseas. Let's watch this part. I am running for president of the United States. Joe Biden is not. And my presidency will be about bringing a new generation of leadership to America that is focused on the work that we need to do to invest in the ambitions and aspirations of the American people. And that's why I ask, can the American people trust you in these moments, even when it's maybe uncomfortable for Americans to, to have to, to level with Americans in that way? So that's why I ask. And it sounds like what you're saying is you feel like you never saw anything like that from President Biden. I have time. worked with Joe Biden, whether it, hours and hours and hours 
over these four years, whether it be in the Situation Room or the Oval Office. Joe Biden is the one who was able to bring NATO together, a crisis where for the first time in 70 years, Europe saw and has seen war. Joe Biden has done the work that has been about being a leader on what we have done to fix so much of what has been broken in terms of the economy because of Donald Trump's mismanagement. I speak with not only sincerity, but with a, 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 a real firsthand account of watching him do this work. I have no reluctance in saying that. No, of course I don't. Yeah, I don't recall seeing 11 U.S. Marines. I don't recall seeing a soldier and a sailor getting killed, excuse me, a corpsman to be exact, getting killed in the botched Afghanistan withdrawal, which, by the way, the uh, Trump campaign, the Trump, excuse me, the Trump presidency, they had the Taliban agree to a deal on May in May of 2021 for a conditions-based withdrawal, but then Biden got pissed off and pushed it back because he wanted the photo op for September the 11th. And of course, we all know what the hell happened. I don't recall there being a war going on between Russia and Ukraine when Trump was in office. As a matter of fact, that entire situation kicked off in 2014 when Obama was in office, 2013, my bad. It just got worse when Biden got in. I don't recall that happened when Trump was in office. I also recall the Middle East being relatively quiet when Trump was in office. I also recall China, for the most part, being put in their place when Trump was in office. NATO is NATO. NATO has always been together. The only thing that NATO has had to do is pay a little bit more, which, by the way, they should. They should pay their fair share on this one. Instead of it being the wealthy billionaires here in the United States, the job creators, I think it should be NATO that pays their fair share to get U.S. equipment because that's the actual truth of the situation. NATO, for the most part, has been sucking off the United States, and they've been living quite fat off the United States, and that right there is what happened, is that Joe Biden basically gave them whatever the hell they wanted. In some cases, it seemed like they may have even bullied it out of him. Remember the photos of Emmanuel Macron, which, of course, I could not provide, but don't worry, all things will be linked in the description box. The fact of the matter is that, yeah, nobody likes this woman. But there was also one more thing, too, and I did say in the previous video that they were going to be narrative setting after this election was over with. Well, let's go ahead and get to that. About the historic nature of your candidacy on the campaign trail. Why is that? Oh, well, I'm clearly a woman. <laughs> I don't need to point that out to anyone. Uh, the, the point that most people really care about is, can you do the job? And do you have a plan to actually focus on them? But I hear and, you on and that. But that, is, that is why I spend the majority of my time listening and then addressing the concerns, the challenges, the dreams, the ambitions, and the aspirations of the American people. They deserve it. I ask because to implement the agenda that you want to implement, you have to win first. You have to win the of White course. House. And right of now, course. there is a big gender gap in this race. Fewer men support you right now than they did President Biden. Some of your allies have suggested there's sexism at play. I wonder, do you think there is sexism at play here? Let me just tell you something. You've come to my events, and you will see there are men and women at those events, whether it be small events or events with 10,000 people. So the experience that I am having is one in which it is clear that regardless of someone's gender, they want to know that their president has a plan to lower cost, that their president has a plan to secure America in the context of our position around the world. They want a president of the United States who honors our military, who understands the importance of America's leadership around international rules and norms. Obviously, I am a woman, even though the Democratic Party does not know what one is. Huh. Also, something else, too, in that bit to go on top of this, there was also that little bit about, uh, yeah, can you get the trust of male voters? Those types of questions there, those types of things that are being brought up, paraphrased, all that type of stuff there. The fact of the matter is, is should this woman lose the selection, which I believe she will, the narratives will be out of control. First and foremost, they'll look to Russia. Then they'll realize the American people don't believe the Russia hoax. They'll look to then uh, black men. They'll blame black men for the loss. Then they'll blame white men as a whole for the loss. The fact of the matter is that they will be blaming men for the loss. Don't worry, we'll be coming back to that a little bit later on this week because obviously narratives will be a thing that will in fact be discussed when in reality the truth be told is the main reason why it is that people will be voting for this election is because, well, believe it or not what Anna Kasparian said. Trump is the middle finger manifested in human form. And I think that the individuals who support him, you know, they might support him for other reasons as well, but I do think that one of the dominant reasons is that it's giving a middle finger to our political establishment, uh, to our institutions. And 
a lot of Americans feel like those institutions and the political establishment has let them down, whether we're talking about the Democratic establishment or the Republican establishment. The current political establishment, and they're tired of the robots that get sent out there. Look, this woman is very, very much a robot. Obviously, she had another function before she got into politics, but I don't think I need to say any more about that or else the, the, the channel might get nuked to the shadow realm. The fact of the matter is there is a reason why it is this woman is losing voters, and if we keep the pace, then we can actually force the media to admit the election is over on election night. So go out there, vote your butts off, go out there, vote early, often take advantage of everything you guys can, and ensure that this evil little witch does not be in office, even though this evil little witch will probably be, how do I say, controlled by the man that uh, you guys have seen here. By the way, he was the, he had Eminem at this rally. Eminem just looks washed up, just a good old-fashioned sellout. Then again, at the same time, I came across this little bit here about his connections to people who are connected to Diddy. It makes me wonder why it is that he jumped so fast to get on the Kamala train. But then again, though, he also jumped extremely fast to get on the Hillary train, and he also jumped extremely fast to get on the uh, Cle Biden train as well. So maybe what Anna Kasparian is saying is correct. Maybe the American people can just... Uh, Look at this robot that is Kamala Harris and say to themselves, she's just another line politician. She's nothing special. Just give a good old-fashioned middle finger to the establishment. But you guys send what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, cut the notifications on. Uh, we're going to be back to posting a lot of content. Yes, there were a couple of days that I was out. I was at the Trump rally on Monday, and normally I don't post anything on Sunday, but things are probably going to change starting next year. Very, very hard to have, very, very hard to believe. We're already right here at the very end of the year. And by the way, I may have one more surgery before the year is over with. Speaking of that, make sure you guys still please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off, and I'll see you guys later.